Welcome everybody to today's webinar. We're ready to rock and roll, um, but we, as always, like to take just a minute um, before we actually start with the meat of the presentation and present a little uh, video. So without further ado, we are going to today be talking about doubling your cold email response rate with top tricks sales people are using to get executives to respond. Well, let's play a quick video, make sure everyone has the time to get in, and, and, and then we'll go from there. So my name is Dan Murdoch. I'm the Director of Marketing and Sales Development for WorkMarket. And WorkMarket is a freelance management system, so we're a software as a service company. How can you put an investment into your sales development organization while not doubling the size of the team from an operational capital perspective? And so with the investment in InsideSales.com, I'm, I'm enabled to essentially double the size of my team, in some cases triple the size of my team, in productivity and sales activity, with making 800% less of the investment. So automating all the processes of logging calls, researching. I wanted to take the thinking element completely out of sales development's hands. I wanted to empower myself to be able to point them in the proper direction while also giving them the ability to just worry about executing. And so if we're talking about that from a pipeline perspective and we're looking at the overall funnel, it's a 358% increase in productivity and sales activity, whether that be calls and or emails. The qualified appointments have in turn increased by 300%. And if you go down the rest of the funnel, opportunity creation is up by 500% and so we'll close one deals. And so obviously exciting numbers for us. So ultimately, if we have five people or 500 people, we have the type of technology that allows us to scale and to build. InsideSales.com is revolutionizing the way people at least engage, obviously from an outbound and inbound perspective around prospecting and ultimately generating pipeline value that no other company could ever be synonymous with or be able to recreate. All right, I think we're ready to rock and roll. So um, quick plug here, if you haven't already joined or subscribed, please do take a look at our Sales Acceleration Podcast. It's awesome. Um, I know because I'm on the show uh, twice a week doing it with my friend and colleague, Steve Ayer. Now, jumping into the, uh, how this will work. So this is going to last about 45 minutes. Uh, please join the conversation, hashtag Inside Sales Webinar. Also, I need you right now to open up your QA box, type your name and where you're from, just so we can make sure we know everybody knows how to use the Q&A box. And I'm going to just start mentioning some names um, here. We got Mark, we got from Mindstream, Susan from Coaxia, we got Tony from Pacific Life, um, Al from CSA, Kat from PB, Kat, how are you? Um, John, perfect, perfect. Um, so we got everybody coming in. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce our esteemed guest for today. So myself, I'm Gabe Larson. I'm the director of Inside Sales Lab. I've been with the company three years. Prior to that, I was with Accenture, Goldman Sachs, and a company called Gallup. Um, but enough about me. More importantly, we've got Brian. Um, Brian, how the heck are you? You gave up on the last name, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I could, I could say it. I know it's Cruzberger. So, Brian, um, we've been talking a lot about email. I'm excited to, to have you on today. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself so I do it a, a, probably a little better justice. Sure. Uh, so I was a sales guy. I uh, always worked for you know, startup businesses, technology, media, and uh, I hated a cold call. So I developed the system for myself. Since then, since then uh, we've helped our clients generate about 1.25 billion in sales in the last year, 
saving about 8 million hours cold calling. And uh, we have 75,000 people on our email newsletter all about how to use email to get meetings. So uh, founder break through email, which essentially will do uh, paper appointment services and one lead a day, which is our online training. I love it. I love it. Well, Brian brings a lot of expertise, both from the research as well as the kind of the on, on hand. Um, Brian, I want to jump right in, but uh, we've already got some great QAs coming in. thought maybe I'd just jump and hit this one initially. Coming from Taylor, he wondered if we, he's asking collectively here, do we have any data on response rates from LinkedIn in-mail versus regular email? Is that something you guys dive into? Have you more focused just on the email side of things? Well, we'll cover uh, – I profiled several different buyers and, um, you know, what, what they respond to, whether it's cold calling, cold email, or LinkedIn. Uh, the response rate based on medium, whether it's LinkedIn or email, to me, I, I haven't seen anything that's drastically different. Uh, fundamentally, you're, you're, even if you're hitting people on their in-mail, many times it's going to go to their email anyway. Uh, I think – you know, if you're trying to make a decision on which one to do, uh, frankly, the, the question I would be asking is how do I, how do I actually communicate to somebody and create an opportunity for them, and, and who's the right buyer that's going to be interested in what I offer, and and focus on that, and then whatever medium you use, whether it's LinkedIn or email, if you're in sales, you should do both, but. Um, that's not really like the the question I I would be asking if I wanted more meetings. Yeah, yeah. So you need to identify which buyer maybe and which method maybe works best with with that buyer. Um, that actually sets up a good kind of first poll question we wanted to throw out to the group. Um, what communication method are you most likely to respond to? So obviously today we're going to be talking about email, but I wondered from the group how hot is it? Are you are you, if someone's trying to sell to you, you most likely to, to respond via voicemail, uh, you know, a, a phone call to your desk, a phone call to your mobile, or, or just LinkedIn? Um, go ahead and put that in. I want to see the results of that. Now we got Q&A coming in already. Um, you know, Taylor, maybe just to pl play with yours as we finish this up, um, I ran an internal study just at InsideSales.com where we literally tested the same email um, in in-mail um, versus email, same subject, same body, same signature. Um, we had a 3x response rate uh, using in-mail with the exact same email, quote-unquote, template uh, via in-mail than we did uh, email. So not saying that's a, a you know done and dusted, but we did run that internally, and I thought it was kind of an interesting result. Okay, here's the, the, the result. So when it comes to preference methods, we've got 60.4%. Um, Brian, is this surprising? You see these results. Um, you know, certainly email dominates, but you got LinkedIn there creeping up on it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's consistent. Uh, I mean, if you ask me what I'd prefer, it'd be mobile phone. But it, it's mobile phone from somebody I know. You know, and if it's yeah. from somebody I don't know, <clears throat> then it's email. Uh, LinkedIn, yeah. I check, you know, monthly. Uh, I mean, it really depends on your audience. You know, does your audience or does your target, you know, are they more likely to be on their email? Are they more likely to be on LinkedIn? You know, what are what are they responding and, and, and how do they prefer to be re reached? Interesting. Well, we did a brief study at InsideSales.com. It's actually yet to be released. Um, this is just some preliminary results. Where we did ask busy decision makers, we said, hey, what method are you most likely to respond to? And interestingly, the results were somewhat close to what we just saw in that poll where email, you know, 90% of respondents said they were most likely to respond via email. Um, social, they're a little bit down the line. Again, this is looking at a broad spectrum. This isn't just millennials. This isn't just baby boomers. If you cut it slightly different, these numbers did change a little bit. So this is looking at the broad audience. So Guys, the message here is email still king, and I'm excited to kind of jump in here and have Brian talk a little bit about some of the best practices and strategies that he's found to be effective here as we dive in. So the problem with email, though, is, boy, we're still getting tons and tons of emails. And so if you, if you want to be effective at email, you've got to be 
you got to be differentiated. You got to be different in the way you do it. We're seeing, according to this study, 121 emails the average person is receiving each day. And so uh, I think this is a great setup to turn it over to Brian and let's dive into some of the tips, strategies, and learnings that, that, that you've experienced, Brian. Yeah, so I mean, even like if you look at Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, he wakes up at like 3.45 in the morning or 4.45, or like 4, 4 a.m. essentially, and he gets 700 emails a day. And I mean, so the average person's getting 121. I mean, just think of what the, the, you know, the executives <laughs> that we're actually trying to reach. Uh, when, when I start talk, to talk about email, I always like to start with cold calling. You know, because that's what I did. That's what most people know. Uh, I personally found that I was pretty effective cold calling if I could get somebody on the phone. And ultimately, you know, the real issue I had was the pickup rate. So whether it was 10 years ago or now, when I call somebody, most everybody's not going to pick up the phone, right? So only 5% of people that you call will pick up the phone. So the, the rest of the time, 95% of the time, we're essentially wasting our time leaving voicemails that are never returned. And, and ultimately, uh, you know, kind of like how you were talking about earlier, uh, I prescribe to the um, do unto others as you want done to yourself, the golden rule. So do, you know, would you want a cold call from somebody else? You know, do you want, like, when was the last time you bought something from a telemarketer? Or how do you feel if somebody, you know, calls you at home at 8 o'clock and is trying to get you to switch cable services, right? Uh, personally, I have, I've never bought, and it just, it's, a new, it's, a, it's just annoying, frankly. So do you want to be that, that person, you know, inside sales? And then, you know, the, the question is how do, you, how do you actually reach somebody? The, the stats are changing, uh, and the behavior is changing, is kind of what we talked about a little bit, but Americans talk the most out of you know, any country. Germans talk the least, and they're only on the phone for three minutes a day. The average salesperson is making 52 dials a day. I found that consistent with you know, what I was doing, say, 15 years ago, and it's taking 18 dials to connect with an actual buyer, and the callback rate is, you know, is abysmal. So... There's also some other shifts. Uh, last year, Coca-Cola and J.P. Morgan both cut voicemail corporate-wide. So they asked all their employees, do you want voicemail? Pretty much everybody you know, raised their hand and said no. And, and so they cut it because people have their mobile phones and you know, they can use that and people weren't checking it. So we went out and did – essentially we went out and talked to a bunch of different executives, different roles, different companies. And, and just ask them, you know, like, what's your day like? And, you know, who, who's reaching out to you? How do you feel about it? How do you prefer to be reached out to? So this is Janine Pelosi, and she gets 1,000 cold emails a month, uh, 40 to 60 a day, and she responds to 1% of them. So they're a startup. They've raised $45 million. She's head of marketing. Uh, now, cold calls, she hasn't picked up. Uh, a or checked her voicemail in something like eight years, and and she's working for a company called Zoom, which is uh, essentially audio video conferencing. And she just she stopped checking voicemails, e even like internally they know not to check you know voicemails. Uh, many times if I'm talking to my friends, I'll call them and I'll either not leave a voicemail and just send a text. You know, like, hey, like, you know, like my wife, like, she doesn't check voicemail. So she's trained me not to, not to even make uh, cold or not to leave voicemails. And LinkedIn, she doesn't check because for her, she knows that it's just salespeople trying to reach out to her. Now, this is just one, one person. Now, here's what she recommended people actually do. So from an email standpoint, how she responds is authentic humor will get her attention. Uh, but she's going to send it to her team. And we know this. If, if you followed some of what I talk about, you, you're probably familiar with the waterfall technique where, you know, we'll get a referral from the executive to the person that we're actually trying to target uh, because we know that it's not worth their time, but it's potentially worth somebody else's time. Uh, other suggestions, you know, email is going to be the best way to reach me, but just not in the morning. I'm too busy. Uh, the best is later in the day. It's okay to send an email after lunch. 
Uh, obviously, referrals are the number one way to get a hold of people. If someone can get to my president or CEO, I'll have to take a look at it. Now, I want you to also understand, I cold emailed her. So I had no relationship with her. I wrote her an email. I set up a partnership with their organization. Later on, we kind of developed a relationship, and, and she was telling me some interesting things. I was like, I've got to interview you. So out of the thousand cold emails, I sent her an email, got a response right away. So there was something different that I did in that email that most people aren't, you know, because they're out kind of hammering out templates. Uh, and, and really what it comes down to, you have to create a credible opportunity for the other person. Now, if you want to double your response rate, I'll, and I want you to write this down right now, uh, what I recommend you do, and this is like for everybody I talk to, all the emails I've seen, uh, the, the number one mistake everybody, everybody makes is they write all about themselves, right? Like my company, what I do, you know, like what, whatever it may be, how long you've been in business, and how your product works, blah, 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 all the features, you know. And ultimately, what they don't do is they don't create an opportunity for the other person. So if you want to double your response rate with one shift, is stop writing about yourself, start writing about how you can create an opportunity for the other person, how you can help them, what the end benefit is, right? So like our company, the end benefit is you're going to find more leads and you're going to increase sales and you're going to save time doing it. It has nothing to do with our actual product. Now, if you look at, uh, if you look at Gino, now Gino's head of, head of technology, $5 billion company, he gets 4,000 cold email outreaches, you know, 200 a day. Everyone is writing the guy. And he's getting 200 cold calls a month, so you know, only 10, 10 a day. And he's only responding to 0.5 for him. Now, this is just a small subset because we did interviews with them. You know, he's not checking LinkedIn because, again, you know, he knows that the, the people that are reaching him are, are mostly salespeople. Uh, now, here are some of Gina's recommendations. You know, I'm often not the right person for them to contact. You know, message sent doesn't mean message received. Uh, you don't want to be you know, victim of the delete button. Uh, people send meeting invites. I thought that was actually interesting, where they'll send a meeting invite to, to him uh, and not even send the email, just like, you know, uh, kind of a, a cold meeting invite. But, you know, he never never takes them. He just deletes them. Uh, and his suggestions are understand what's in my world. You know, many times I receive contact that is not in any way remotely something directly responsible, you know, or something I'm interested in, and you're better – understanding the audience, titles don't represent what a person may be interested in most. Uh, and most important, the thing is to know your audience. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, when it comes to messaging people, you really have to understand, you know, what's in it for them and what the end outcome is that you're going to really help them. Uh, we're not selling Advil. We're selling the cure for the, the pain of the headache or the ankle sprain, or the bum shoulder, or, or whatever it is. You know, Colin, uh, he was responding to 3% of emails. Most people don't understand the you know, position or the value that they can bring to my company. Uh, it's annoying when the cold caller cold email is lengthy, or it's just a cut and paste template. People hate templates, uh, especially when they know. I mean, here's Lauren Wexler, 200 emails, 2% response rate. Email is the best way to get a hold of me. Rarely have I ever checked voicemail. Uh, beyond a ridiculous amount of LinkedIn messages, uh, uh, mistakes. And, and Lauren actually had some good good suggestions. I'm not, not the right person to contact. Uh, uh, sorry, this is looks like this is Gino's. Uh, so this is this is how your buyer or the executive is actually interpreting your message. And these are all the questions that you need to ask. And and I recommend you write this down. Is this for me? Right. So is this email for me? Do I understand it? Do I care? And along, you know, along those lines is, is this worth my time? So within that is really, is this relevant to me? Because that's, that's the question that they're trying to answer. And that's the question that you need to answer before you reach out to them. And then ultimately, they're, they're asking themselves, uh, what should I do? Uh, any thoughts on this? Yeah, a, a couple things, Brian, that have come in on the the kind of the Q and A box. Um, maybe I could just in, insert a couple of those now. When you, a couple of people just asked generally about this study 
Um, can you just back up real quick and kind of give it an outline as to the overall kind of thing that you did to really grab some of this information from these different personas or people you interviewed? Yeah, I just talked to them. You know, I, I just... And how, how, how I, many was it? I, you I, talked I, to I, 25, 30... I, so in this, this was just a small sampling, right? We just talked to five different executives to just kind of take a 35 minutes, you know, 30 to 40 minutes with, with each one of them, different companies, different roles, just to get some ideas of kind of what they're dealing with on the day-to-day, right? So uh, now what anybody can do is you can talk to any of your clients and do this yourself, right? And this isn't something like this, the de facto whatever, but the reality is the people that we talked to were like, we don't want templates. We want it to be relevant. Most people don't understand what we do. You know, we were only responding to, say, 1% of any of the outreach. You know, the outreach has significantly <laughs> increased, you know, and yeah, what, yeah, yeah, interesting. people better have, I mean, why do you, have, better have it together. Right? Yeah. Well, why, Brian, do you feel like people – I mean, this message, it seems pretty, you know, make it about them, you know, make it relevant to them. How come sales reps aren't getting this across? Is it because we're too lazy as sales reps? Or how, how, why are we not doing some of these messages? Why do you think? I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is potentially laziness. Um, you, you know, with all the automated tools we have now, why not just create a template and blast out to a thousand people and see, man, what the heck comes back? If I blast it out to a thousand and I get ten people to respond, well, that's easier than calling ten people. So that, that's kind of what first comes to my mind. But um, maybe, maybe that's not true. Let's 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 ask the group. I, I'd be curious uh, to. I mean, I have my answers, right? But like from from everybody who's listening in, like, what do you think the reason is? You know that people you know, aren't, aren't getting the, the kind of response or taking that extra effort. Um, yeah, guys, open up the chat. Op- yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, o- open up your chat window, your Q&A. Um, why are people not following some of these principles? Why are they not going the extra mile and making it relevant? Are they, are they not understanding that this is important to do? Um, so we got Patricia saying, hey, man, look, it takes too much time to prospect, and often it's hard to know if they're even the right person. Um, Jim, pressure to hit activity numbers. Interesting, Jim. Um, I'm being paid on number of activities, so i got to send more stuff. Takes too much time. It's not practical at scale. I can't do this for every person. Um, Barry says, oh, we got some great, <laughs> we got some great answers there. Barry says, poor communication skills. You know, hey, look, sometimes we don't write that well, so it's better to use a template. Oh, man, this is gold right here. Hold on. Jennifer, usually marketing sends that blast and sales follows up, so I don't have a problem with it. Um, lack of research. So I, I don't want to go <laughs> – you, you've opened up the kimono here, Brian. I got about 50 of them. People are lazy. That's definitely coming out a lot. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, too, too busy, too lazy. Um, quantity versus quality. I always got to find that balance. Thanks, Michael. Uh, so – uh, with, I mean, you're probably looking at some of these as well, Brian. Surprises in that, or does that kind of line some, with some of the things you believe? Yeah, I mean, I think, let's see, on a meta view, here's what I see. I, I think sales in general, uh, most people have learned from what their bosses have done, right? And they learn from their bosses. Like when I, when I was doing it, it was, you know, it was all cold calling. That's just how, you know, how they did it. And, and, and the idea was like it's a numbers game. You know, more effort, more activity, how many emails, how many messages, how many meetings. And when I got into it, uh, after about 10 years, I finally kind of cracked the code for myself after reading hundreds of books. And what I found was I could work a lot less and go in a lot less meetings if they were the right type of buyers, if they were the right decision makers, if they actually had a need, and they, you know, were larger accounts. Right, so I made more money if I sold a half million dollar sale versus a ten thousand dollar sale. Right, I made fifty times more money. So I would just go after those whale accounts and just go after those target buyers. I didn't have technology like what you guys have now, so it was literally just me writing an email, and I wrote fifteen thousand of them over seven years. 
And so I got really good at like, how do I actually find the right guy who's going to spend a lot of money with me and needs what I have? Uh, and, and so we developed a process, uh, but th- this is, this is actually the, uh, the expectation that I have when I do write somebody. Now, a lot of people will machine gun the world, right? And they're getting a 1% response rate. If, if I polled everybody here, 95%, 98% of people would be, you know, a 0 to 5% response rate on their out- outreach because they're just kind of like, hey, I got all this technology. Now I'm just going to do more. But what happens is it dilutes the message because you're kind of speaking to nobody when you're writing because it's just kind of a generic message or it's just all about you. So nobody responds. But they're like, well, if somebody responds, that's great. And then they typically come to, to, come to our company because they're like, listen, we need messaging that resonates. So we're getting 80% response rates. Half of those are going to take a meeting. A quarter of those typically become sales. This is like across the board what we're seeing with our clients. Now, it's a different process. And, you know, and, and this is the process that we go through where we actually interview the customers, identify the best customers, uh, and, uh, and also identify the trigger event. Uh, to me, nobody really knows how to do it. You know, it's kind of a big mystery. Salespeople do it for a while. They graduate to sales management. They don't have to deal with it. And then, it, you know, they just kind of, it, it, it's kicked down to the 20-something-year-old who's in charge of generating leads. And they don't really know. And they're just kind of like going on blogs and saying, hey, write a short, concise email and, you know, tell them you noticed something and, you know, tell them how great they are, right? And cross your fingers and hopefully they'll respond. That, that's not our process. Um, and, and frankly, the reason I came out with the, this business four, four years ago, five years ago, was all the advice I was hearing never worked for me. And, and I created a process where I'm getting 80% of people to respond every time I write a message. And, and I just wanted to share it, frankly, because it was just such a brutal process. Because if you're not getting the meeting, you're not getting the sales, and then you're not, you know, you're not making commissions, you're not making money, you're not making profit. So, uh, so that's really why we, you know, why we came out with this. Interesting. So this is your eight-step process that you've found to be effective. It sounds like not, I mean, over years of your own prospecting, 15,000 15, emails, you must be a heck of a writer. Um, but these I, are the eight you know, steps. I'm not a, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, I'm, go I'm ahead. not a writer, though. I actually, uh, I never was a writer. You know, I'm learning the craft of writing, but I'm more of a strategist. Uh, mm-hmm. And because it was my time, man. Like I had to write the emails, prospect, go on the meetings, close the sale, and I wanted high value sales. And once I figured out, okay, here's how I can actually sell. Uh, I want high value sales, and I wanted to do the least amount of work. And, and and I didn't have the technology that you have. So now, since you have the technology, if you couple the technology and the messaging and the targeting, and uh, I mean, you, can, you could absolutely kill it. Uh, the key, the absolute key to the whole thing is interviewing your clients. So you can go into any company, any organization, because your, your clients, when they were prospects, think and feel much more like your current prospects than anybody else. And you also want to identify all the trigger events that happened before they reached out to you. So you can essentially like look for those events and, uh, and double down. It's kind of like having a good hand in poker. You're, you're going to, mm-hmm. you know, up the bet. So, yeah. so out of all the clients that didn't work, you know, let's just pick the ones that did work really well and figure out why they did and then establish – you know, messaging based on what they say, not what we say. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's like, you know, um, I mean, if, you know, that, that concept is, it's very, um, it's, it's simple, you know. Now, it may, may not be easy to do, but, y'all, you, you want to get in touch with these people. Why don't you go interview them and actually see what they want? <laughs> now, there's a novel idea. I don't think anybody does it, but I think it's, it's pretty brilliant. Now, Brian, we actually have about 20 questions. I do want to get into a couple other stuff, maybe look at a few examples of emails, get sure. your feedback and the audience's feedback. But a couple questions here, especially on this slide that we're currently looking at with the eight steps. Um, we got Chris Harvey saying, can you talk to us a little bit about automated follow-up? And can you do one more click on that? What do you mean by that? Uh, I love it. 
So it's like, hey, that's interesting. Let me just like automate this so I don't have to think about it, right? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, what would I, what's the, the metaphor here? So, so the idea is that all the hard work has to be done on the messaging because if you can create an opportunity for the other person, then they're going to be interested, right? So if I, what was the guy's name? He, he asked questions. No, this is Chris. Chris Harvey. Okay. Okay. So Chris is like, okay, automated follow up. Hey, how can I save time so I don't have to do it? And the whole thing is predictable. And you know, I, I just have me. You know, I just have meetings and leads fall on my lap, right? Yeah, now, that's what we all want. <laughs> right. And, and, and I'm only using trigger words that I know that my clients want because I've interviewed my clients. Right, like fall on the lap, automated process, predictable sales, you know, machine, uh, you know, all, all these different things. So Chris wants the whole thing to be automated, follow up, predictable, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, that is, that to me is about the 15th step in this process. Uh, what I want to mm-hmm. give him, Chris is a meaning that will change his life. Right, like I, I want him to go on a meeting and the account is so big and, and only go on 10 meetings, right? Like if you, want, if you were just to go on 10 meetings in the next year and each one of those meetings was, you know, your best potential client or would change your business in one meeting, wouldn't you rather do that than just, you know, fire off 5,000 emails and create, you know, all these different accounts and all these different meetings for people that kick the tires and end up not, not actually buying from you? Uh, so, you know, with automated follow-up, there's all kinds of systems that you can use, you know, to, to follow up with people. But again, you know, 99%, 98%, you know, maybe it's just, you know, 50%. You, you, you can look at your own numbers, right? 95% of people aren't responding to you would be my guess. So, so something's broken. And, and Chris, if I yeah. just kept writing you and just kept following up with you and automated the whole thing, how would you feel? You know, if if that's all that Brian, you know, did after this webinar. You know, and yeah. it wasn't creating an opportunity for Chris. So you kind of have to go through it in sequence because if you don't interview your customers, uh, then, you know, then you're not going to develop messaging where people actually care. And uh, and then if you're not identifying that the customers that are actually going to buy, then we're just wasting our time. Um, it, it's kind of like... I, I describe it, uh, I use a fishing metaphor. Imagine you're going fishing and there's a lake and there's a lot of fish and then the, the next lake has a lot of fish but those fish are really big or you go to the third lake and they have a lot of fish and they're really big fish but they're actually hungry and they actually like mm. the bait that you have. So the great thing about prospecting is you get, the only advantage prospecting has uh, because they're, they're not raising their hand, they're not necessarily interested, we don't know, is you get to pick, you know, who you're going to reach out to. Uh, unfortunately, people just don't have a hypothesis or, uh, or a real understanding of, you know, when you reach out to the, the people, uh, who's, going to, who's going to respond and be really interested and actually buy from you. Because I don't want you to have your email open. I don't want them to respond. I don't want them to even take your meeting. I want them to buy from you. Yeah. And, and not even be just a normal buyer. I want them to be like a large, you know, customer. Uh, so, you know, so it's all, it's really all about quality. And even if you have a bad message to a person, you know, it's like selling, uh, selling to a thirsty crowd. Uh, you know, you, even if you have a bad message and the person is, you know, in pain and needs your help, they're going to respond. Going to resonate. Just hoping you can help them. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, a couple, c- couple others that are pretty interesting here, Brian. One coming from Patrick saying, okay, so I get the, you know, quality is important. I get targeting is important, but I still don't see how I can cut through all the kind of noise. If someone's literally getting two to 400 emails a day, even if my messaging is great, they're never even going to see that. How do I make sure that I uh, get in front of somebody if they're getting that many emails? Is it just all about subject line? What, what would you say to that? Well, I mean, there's also the waterfall technique, right? So if, if, I'm, if I'm going after an organization, right, and say, Gabe, I was trying to get a meeting with you, right, and I want to, you know, my target is, 
the, the guy in charge of online labs because I've got some new whatever and I and you're buying something. So I wouldn't just write you. You know, I, I'm I would yeah. look at inside sales as an organization and say, okay, well I don't know who the right person is to target uh, because I don't know the organization. And and this is this is called the waterfall technique. So I would identify, okay, Gabe's my guy. He's he's the guy at the end of the day I want to meet with. And then I'm looking at, okay, well, who's Gabe's boss? And who's his boss? And who are all the people above Gabe? Because I know when I reach out, <clears throat> reach out to them that uh, they're going to, if, if the message resonates with them, they would refer me to Gabe. Because it's way easier for them to just say, oh, yeah, Gabe's the guy. And, and then once they say, you know, say your boss or two levels above you says, you know, hey, you know, Gabe's the guy. What's the likelihood, Gabe, that you would take that meeting? Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot more. I mean, so being able to bring in other prospects encourages or helps your chance of actually getting in front of the right person and ultimately selling the deal. That's kind of what you're referring to as the waterfall approach, as you've, you've said. Yeah, so, so essentially there's four different people, you know, and – uh, I would be going at least two levels above you to get referred down to you. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because what, what's going to happen is if I wrote you directly, maybe you respond and maybe somebody below you, and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, like Mike's going to handle that or somebody else because it's your time. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're interested enough, but uh, – and ultimately, you know, you meet with who you sound like. Yeah. So <laughs> – uh, you know, it, 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 that's not an issue. I mean, we're getting 80% to, uh, to respond and half of those people to take the meeting. Now, it's a smaller selection. The only problem with the technology is we'll machine gun the world. You know, hey, I got this list of 5,000 or 500,000 or 50,000. We can't, we can't speak to everybody because everybody cares about something different. Like everybody logged in here right. cares about something totally different. Uh, and, you know, some people want it done for them. Some people just want a template and they're like, quit telling me about this stuff. You know, I, I don't care. Some people want, uh, you know, the email written for them. Some people want their email reviewed. Some people want a blog or a book, you know, and so, it, so it, it's very difficult to communicate because everyone's in a different stage. Yeah. And some we're certainly seeing customers. what that with the, with the, with the, with our Q&A, we're getting, you know, a lot of different questions about, you know. Well, I'm probably, I'm probably lighting up Q&A because, you know, I'm just kind of revealing, you know, the, the, real, the real gold uh, as far as yeah. just the no BS approach. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, we're, we're getting close to time here. I'd love to hit a couple examples, get feedback from the group and get feedback from, from you, Brian. I just pulled mm-hmm. two emails um, off the web. Um, that were p- potentially p- decently popular. So this one, I don't know if you've seen this. This was passed around LinkedIn a couple months ago, um, had a couple thousand shares. Um, this was actually a decision maker who had shared this and said, hey, I think this is an interesting email. I want to make sure I kind of pass it out there. Brian, by chance, did you come across this email on, on LinkedIn? Maybe a couple No, I haven't, ago? T- I, haven't, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's it's a little bit hard to read, um, so I'm going to flip to here, um, and, and you can kind of glance. I actually think that it's pretty lengthy. Um, this is page one, and then there's kind of a page two. But this busy decision maker had really, and I'm, as I kind of talk here, I'm hoping people will kind of glance through this. This busy decision maker had really highlighted this as an excellent email that he had wished that more people would follow this kind of idea. And right or wrong, um, kind of going with the theme of just taking what people have said they believe is good, I wanted that to, to break down kind of what he said. So I'll flip from page one here to kind of page two, and then he brings it, uh, he kind of brings it to a close in this email. It's very long. I think it's about 300 words. Oh, are we seeing that slide? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so this is how the email ends, and you'll notice here he put in a PS, pretty personalized here. I'm so jealous of your time in Jamaica. If you have time to chat, I'd love to hear how you become volleyball champion. Have you thought about using your unlimited PTO to go back? And then he includes, if you saw in that original email, 
uh, a volleyball gif um, from the movie, you know, from the movie Top Gun. Um, so again, for those of you, I'd love to hear some of your comments in the Q and A. I actually broke down the email here. Um, this is what the busy decision maker highlighted is what they felt was fantastic. So notice these six things. Um, you've got the statement, so putting people at the center of everything. That was actually discovered from their career page. Um, I'm skipping down just a little bit here where it says, and I saw that company ABC is looking to hire quite a few engineers. That came from the career page of this company. Uh, in the digital product development space, that's actually the why statement from the company's website. I want nothing more than to help you find and keep the best people. That actually comes from the gentleman, the prospect's LinkedIn, from the summary page on the LinkedIn. I'm so jealous of your time in Jamaica. That was in the interests section on that prospect's LinkedIn page. Have you thought about using unlimited PTO? That comes from the company website. That's a policy uh, if you, from the company. So um, I, I don't know, you know, I'd, I'd be interested, Brian, you maybe didn't have the, the chance to read it, but. This busy decision maker highlighted and said, oh, my goodness, this person literally found six or seven things that all were from different places that really resonate with not just me but my company, and I wish I had more emails like this. Do you feel like that's a little overboard? Quick, quick, quick thoughts on that? I'm kind of looking at the QA as I ask you that as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so first off, I, short and concise, I disagree. Uh, I, I think that there's no – uh, there's no long copy. There's only boring copy okay? or, or something okay. that's irrelevant. So now I, I do when I edit an email, I, I'll send it to myself and read it on my phone. You know, anytime I get distracted or bored, you know, I, I edit it, you know, because I, I'm assuming they're going to check it on their phone. Um, I don't think it's too long. Uh, what I love about it, you know, personally, when I read it, I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, I like, it didn't really speak to me. <laughs> But, but as much. you described what he described, which is essentially, yeah. hey, this person went to my website, they pulled all this copy, they went to my LinkedIn page, they, they, they pulled things that I've said. Ultimately, it's about the guy who received it. The whole email mm -hmm. is about you know, mm -hmm. how he thinks, how the company thinks, and it totally separates the, the writer because it's about the receiver. So everybody yeah. writes about themselves you know, in my company and blah, 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 this person, you know, kind of passively says, like, you know, we can help you in this, you know, in the things that you care about. Uh, it, it's kind of like going on a date. If the person just talks about themselves, you're going to get bored pretty quick, you know, and you, but if they're interested in engaging you, you'll be interested in them. So just be interested yeah. in the person uh, another trick if you're going after executives, you know, larger organizations, you just look at Google News and just look up their title and what have they said in the last, you know, 18 months. Uh, it's going to be a little bit dated because, it's, you know, if it's in the news, it's probably six to nine months behind what they actually care about right now. But it's going to give you a, an idea on their priorities. Now, if you don't want to do the research, either you, you find somebody else to do it for you or um, – or the meeting's not worth your time. So like, if it's not worth your time to do the research, then you probably need to be meeting with somebody else who, who would be worth your time because you know, you'd be making so much more money uh, because of it. Yeah, man, there is, there's so many great things coming in on the Q&A, man. This, this one apparently has offended some people and some people are in love with it. Just a couple quick responses. Michael you know, saying, hey, this is too intrusive stalking is this disingenuous um you've got samuel uh saying you know this is pretty customized i don't know if my team has time for it um does this style and format appear professional stevens asked that um how do you actually grow a business quickly with such low volume of emails that are so time consuming um one person said i'd wonder how long this would actually take uh to to do this so it looks like a lot of people questioning the, the time, and, and actually the disingenuous. They're saying, you know, this comes off as disingenuous and a little bit fake when, interestingly, you know, the person who posted this said um, this was extremely, um, you know, about me. This was extremely, you know, not templated. Oh, that's interesting. So um, any quick thoughts on that, Brian? I'm, it seems like the, a lot of people who read, read it, probably like you did originally. Maybe that's the issue. They say, 
you know, it comes off as maybe a little bit fake, but when you're this person and you know what all these little hot buttons mean, it actually was the most personalized, relevant, and genuine email you'd ever received. Yeah, I, what do I think? Uh, I think the, the key is to learn from the principles behind it, right? Like maybe yeah. it's not your style, maybe it's not like, but, but what what is it that somebody is going to write on their own LinkedIn and shout from the rooftops and say, hey, salespeople, you know, look at this. Uh, so I, you know, like, would I have a Top Gun GIF, you know, and do that kind of stuff <laughs> and like PTO and, you know, try and kind of develop like some <laughs> fake relationship that I don't have with the person? For, for me, no, but yeah. th this guy liked it. So it, it got the outcome. Uh, I, I think when, when you... When you think about the time, a salesperson doesn't have to be the one prospecting. If you're resourceful, you can get an intern, hire them for free, and have them doing yeah. all the research. I don't think the sales guy or a lady should be the one, you know, doing all this work, uh, especially all the research. You know, I, I don't do that. I just, you know, I send my team. They know how to do the research. I send them a list of, like, okay, here's, here's who I want to meet with. And, and then in two weeks, you know, I have meetings scheduled with all, the, all those folks. Um, the love it. The, the key is like, what's the minimum you can do to still get the outcome, right? What's the, what's yeah. the least amount? The problem is, it's a lot more than you're currently doing. You know, so yeah. you can, uh, you, you know, you can you can do the work and just figure out what that balance is between. Okay, well, I did a bunch of extra work and 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 I actually got the response and see how you can throttle it down, or you can give the work to somebody else. It doesn't have to be you. Yeah, yeah I love that. I love that, and I think you're going to find that more and more, because this is a, it, it does take time to target and think through it and sometimes do it the right way, but it doesn't mean you've got to do it all yourself. So um, let me just kind of wrap up here with a couple quick thoughts. So one thing, you know, certainly from an InsideSales.com standpoint, big believer in email, um, but also in that holistic approach. I, I think – as we've talked about today, different audience respect different mediums. They respect different messages. And so being able to use email and voicemail and, and phone and social and test out different methods in a kind of a holistic cadence is certainly, I think, an applicable way to be thinking about your prospecting activities. And so as you go about that, I'd thrown up a foundational cadence, making sure you think about persistency as you reach out to your customers. Got a great ebook on kind of diving deeper into to email best practices that InsightSales.com has produced. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of bring it to a close here, but I know there's oh, so many, um, uh, you know, so many more questions to answer. So we've got something here from, from Brian and team, kind of a takeaway from them. Feel free to go and grab this breakthrough bundle. And I think Brian and I would both be offended if you don't grab us on LinkedIn and continue the conversation there. Would love to dive deeper and answer some of your questions there. So, Brian, closing closing arguments or comments? Hmm. <laughs> closing arguments or comments? I'm looking, I'm looking at the, uh, <laughs> the chat. Uh, what would I say? I, you know, I, listen, I think everyone's trying to figure out how to do, you know, how to get the most with the least amount of work. Uh, and, you know, just go, go out and talk to some of your customers. Yeah. Ask, ask them, you know, pick up the phone, talk to two or three people, and just say, listen, I'm trying to figure out how to reach more people. You know, how do you feel? And, and, and don't take, you know, don't take our, you know, our perspective and, and just go in and, and talk to them. And, and, you know, when you respond, when you not respond, and get the guidance, you know, and, and stop trying to figure it out yourself and just ask the type of people that you're trying to reach you know, how they like to be approached uh, because they'll give you, you know, golden advice. And, you know, assuming it's not working, you know, because if you're here, it's probably not working how you'd like it to, um, you know, go go out. And that's just a simple thing that anybody can do. Um, and yeah. because once you figure this out, like the skill doesn't go away, you know, and yeah. email is just becoming, you know, or written text is just becoming more and more important. And, uh, you yeah. know, and, and go through our course, you know, we, we've, we, we've set it up. So, um, 
you know, no matter what your product is, no matter where you are, as long as you have customers, you know, we can, we can help you. Yeah, love it. All right, well, with that, everybody, have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for joining. And again, let's continue the conversation on, on, on social media. Have a, have a fantastic afternoon.